Hello, maybe you want to know what's going on in immigration court, or you're wondering what good news there is in the immigration law context. Well, this webinar is for you. My name is Jorge Molina. I am an immigration attorney based in Dallas, Fort Worth, but taking cases worldwide. Today, we're going to be talking about something very exciting. Well, at least to me, which is prosecutorial discretion. And about six months ago, we did a presentation about, you know, the new changes and, and new priorities for prosecutorial discretion. And now we're updating that presentation and what we um, talked to you about last. So I prepared a few slides here, not really a lot of content in the slides, but just to help you visualize what's going on. So let me share my screen right now and we'll, we'll continue our presentation there. Okay. All right, folks, so just a brief caveat. This is based on information we have today, May 20th, 2022, this is subject to change. And if there is a change, we will give you more information and perhaps make another presentation um, like this one. So last year we were talking about, you know, new approach is pretty much going back to normal. What has changed is that we have a more formal um, system and clear guidelines as to how to um, request prosecutorial discretion. But let's let's remember what it is. So prosecutorial discretion is pretty pretty, um, pretty much a law enforcement agency's use of its own judgment and resources in deciding whether to enforce a law against someone or not. Right. So yes, you know. Agencies have limitations, and some people do things that are worse than others. So all law enforcement agent agencies, from your local police station to the military to um, to ICE, has some discretion as to how they're going to enforce the law, when, where, and to whom. Right. So this is this is what we're talking about. But the the context, what we're, what we were talking about last year was there's a new emphasis in rededicating the law enforcement resources to the spirit of fair play and decency, meaning, you know, there's millions of un undocumented individuals in this country. Many of them, aside from their immigration violations, they have no other records or, or negative record with law enforcement. And in fact, they are contributing members of society, filing taxes, parents of U.S. citizens or sons or daughters of U.S. citizens or spouses of U.S. citizens. They are integral members of families, of communities, of our society. Thus, you know, when we have a policy that anyone who's undocumented is fair play, you're really harming the American public. You're, Amer you're harming American families. Now, this is not to say that we're going to give a free pass to everybody, but we need to be smart who, who we're gonna target. So what's going on is that there's approximately 1.5 million cases pending nationwide in immigration court. There's about 400 immigration, well, a little bit over 400 immigration judges nationwide. They simply cannot manage the docket. They cannot manage how many cases they have pending. There's a series of reasons why we reached that point, but bring it, bring it back to our theme today. Prosecutorial discretion is an essential tool to tackle that backlog. All right, so, so who is a priority for, for removal? Who's a priority to be deported, right? So we have three pretty much. Threats to national security. So think of you know, terrorists, people who are, you know, in international criminal organizations, things of that nature. Second, individuals who are a threat to public safety. So think of, for example, drug dealers, um, people engaged in violent crime, like kidnapping, murder, shootings, um, you know, people who engage in multiple um, DUIs, 
you know, people that really endanger the public that put all of us at risk. And third, our individual who are a threat to the security of the border. So uh, the definition for that is just individuals who arrive to the United States after November 20th, 2020. So those are the main priorities. So what, what does it mean if you fall outside these priorities? So let's say you're not, you know, you don't have any criminal record, right? And you're not really, you know, a threat to public safety. You're not a terrorist. And you've been in the United States for many years. Say so you have a family in the United States, you have a business, you file taxes. But for one reason or another, you ended up in immigration proceedings. So what we're seeing right now is that DHS, meaning, you know, the attorneys for the government are generally dismissing these type of cases. Now, they won't dismiss every case, um, depending on, on some factors but they're generally dismissing it. They can also do some other things. And it really does depend on the, in the, in the case, but it really depends on the, on the circumstances. So for example, if someone could get a green card by filing a family petition and do it with citizenship and immigration services, you know, dismissing your case in immigration court is great news because you're relieving yourself from the stress from court you're, you're going to be probably, you know, a green card holder within a year or so, depending on your jurisdiction, if you do it with citizenship and immigration services versus the many, many years your case is going to be pending. And you're also removing the case from the immigration court docket. You know, those are the sort of cases that shouldn't be in the immigration court. So that's what happens. But let's say you're not eligible for a green card, let's say you're not married to a U.S. citizen, you don't have a child that it's a United States citizen over 21 years old, or you don't have a lawful entry to the United States. So you can't really get your green card here. Well, if you're eligible for a waiver and you can complete the process in, you know, in your native country, right? Just go trip abroad for you know, a week or a few weeks and then come back, you know, that's one thing. But in other circumstances, you know, we have individuals who are not eligible for a waiver or they have other immigration violations. So their only recourse, the only place that they can seek to legalize their, their case or their, their situation is in the immigration court context. So in those cases, you need to be very careful because yes, ICE could dismiss your case and the immigration court can dismiss a case, meaning that you don't have a pending case, but if they dismiss it and you don't have any other way of legalizing your situation, you're not gonna be eligible for anything else. Now, for some, you know, they really don't have a strong case to an immigration court anyway, so they're just better off you know, remaining undocumented outside of court. But for those that have a good case, you know, even if they're offering you prosecutorial discretion, maybe you're better off staying in immigration court. And that's where good advice comes in. So here's another thing that um, DHS is doing. So instead of just offering you to dismiss the case, on occasions, if, if the case is strong enough, they would agree that you merit, that you deserve what you're asking for. Now, those are extraordinary cases. And for you to get to that point, you really need to show your case to, to eyes, right? So how would you do it? So let's say, you know, let's say you have a few convictions. Let's say you have a, a, a driving while intoxicated. Maybe you got in a, in a fist fight in a bar when you're young something of that nature, but you're still eligible for cancellation of removal or some other form of relief in immigration court. So what you do is that, you know, you tell ICE, listen, this is what's going on with this family. We have, you know, so many qualifying relatives. We have so many children. This is how long I've lived in the United States. And here are the bad things. Okay. You know, I was irresponsible, committed to DWI. You got to provide the full record right? And importantly, you need to show that you've learned your lesson, that you're not going to do that again. 
that the government shouldn't be concerned about you killing someone or hurting someone or doing something, you know, ridiculous again. And then that's, that's how you show your rehabilitation. And if there's other circumstances, for example, you know, you have a sick child or a sick family member, or there's some other extenuating circumstances, right? Particular to your case, make sure to bring that out. So you want to tell, you want to tell a good story, something that's compelling, right? You need to humanize yourself, but also you need to make it easy for eyes to see the things and don't hide the ball, be honest. You know, if you have a criminal record, you get a, you, you get to explain what it is. You don't want to, you know, be surprised by questions about this in immigration court or by the judge. You're going to be upfront about these things. So that's another thing that we can get in immigration court. You can get the government to agree that you deserve some type of relief. Another thing, and this is for other sort of cases, is that we're looking at administrative closure. Now, this happens in very particular cases when you know there's a visa available to you, but it's many years down the road. There's an interest in keeping your case in court. So they were ending close. This is not a, this used to be the preferred. Um, form of prosecutorial discretion back in the Obama years. But what happened is that 400,000 cases were kept in the docket. And then the next administration came in and they, they reopened those cases. Now we have about half a million cases um, that could have been dismissed in still pending in immigration court. So, you know, only in, in certain cases would they, you know, agree to do administrative closure. But are we limited to these form of um, to this form of relief or prosecutorial discretion? Absolutely not. The sky's or you're only limited by your imagination and what immigration is willing to do. So you know, as long as you're reasonable, you qualify for what you're asking for, and depending on circumstances, you know, we can see other things, right? Um, one thing that I do know that ICE is not doing right now is that they're not adding people affirmatively to the docket. Why? Because they're trying to clear the backlog. So if, let's say you have a very, very, very strong case for cancellation of removal. And you want to, you know, go ahead and, and legalize your, your, your situation, but you've never been apprehended by ICE. You're not a priority. It's unlikely that you're going to commit a crime that's going to land you in immigration court. Well, some people like to end up in immigration court to get their papers. But ICE is just not doing that affirmatively right now. So, you know, so what's, what comes next after, you know, after your case is either dismissed? Well, if it's dismissed, importantly, um, ICE can reinstate proceedings against you if you don't have another form of relief. Let's say, you know, you had a weak cancellation of removal case, you didn't want to end up with a deportation order and they dismiss your case because you're not a priority. Well, you know, down the road, they can reinstate, they can start your case all, all over again, as unlikely as it might be, but that's a possibility. Also, again, if this was the only way that you could seek relief, you know, you can't really pursue it anymore if your case is closed. But if you have another venue, if you can do it through the consular process or through immigration, dismissing your case is a very, very good thing. But to summarize what we just discussed today. So DHS has announced a more streamlined process of asking for prosecutorial discretion. We have a policy that's designed to clear the backlog and to focus on the priorities. Individuals who are a threat to national security, public safety, or to the safety of our border. And if you're not a priority and you're already in immigration court, ICE is pref uh, prefers to dismiss your case whether you're able to seek relief elsewhere or you have no other form of relief, knowing that they can reinstate proceedings in the future. Now, I think that there's a few questions left here. I want to just go ahead and the slides and I'll take some questions here. I think I, I see one in the chat here. Okay, so we have multiple questions here. So first question. How much does it cost to apply for 
PD. Are there any application fees? So that's a very nice thing about prosecutorial discretion. You don't need to fill out a form. You don't need to pay, pay a fee. It's completely free. Now, an attorney might charge you money to do this work, but you don't need to pay the government a fee to look at your case. They, as a matter of fact, even if you're unrepresented, they're looking at it affirmatively. Okay, so there's no fee, um, but there's a there's there's actually a, a process you should follow depending on the jurisdiction that you're in. So next question, how do I apply for it? Can I do it alone? And what do I need? Very, very good question. Okay, so how do you apply for it? Well, it really depends on the your local jurisdiction, but most jurisdictions would ask you to send an email. And then in this email, you wanna include all the circumstances of your case, but you need to be succinct. You need to do it in a way that someone within the first 30 seconds of looking at it has a, has a very good picture of your case. So perhaps you start with an executive summary and then you go into the details of the case, right? So I've been in the United States for this long. I, you know, this is, these are the bad things I've done. This is my, the good things I've done. This is why you should, you know, dismiss a case and measure a closer case or agree to relief with us. And, you know, so we can get our papers in immigration court. And then, um, can you do it alone? Well, technically you can. And government attorneys are also very gracious about individuals, you know, representing themselves. However, and something so important, I would encourage you to hire a professional who has done this before, because it's very important to show your case and show your, your, your positive factors quickly and understanding what immigration is looking for. So you can do it on your own. I highly encourage you to hire a professional. When do you apply for it? In the Dallas-Fort Worth area, in Oklahoma, and actually most of Texas, I would say at least three months before your hearing. So you give ICE plenty of time to look at your case, look at the, at the record that they have and to run a background check. They have to um, run a background check before they can dismiss your case. So um, at least 90 days before your court hearing. Okay, so this, what, what we're talking about right now is prosecutorial discretion with DHS, pretty much going to the people who are trying to deport you and say, hey, don't deport me. This is why, right? So it's a step before immigration court. Procedurally, how it works is that once you convince DHS to agree with you or that the government says, okay, yes, you're not a priority, we're going to apply this. We go to court, ask court to dismiss the case, and since both parties agree, usually it's dismissed. Now, is this process safe for me? I got news for you. ICE knows everything about you once you're in, 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 the, in the system. They run your background checks. They have your address history. They know who your relatives are. So is it safe? Well, it's no worse than where you're at right now if you're already in immigration court and you have nothing to lose. Now, let's say you are indeed a priority. Let's say you, you, you have something negative in your record that would make you some a priority. That doesn't mean that you're gonna necessarily lose your case. So even if you're denied for prosecutorial discretion, you still have a chance in court. It just means that I doesn't think that you chance and that you you know you need someone to fight for you, right to prove your case but this is the this is the first step right so if you if you can avoid that fight you're better off right you're you you won the game before you even started it but if it's denied hey you get a second chance so but let's say that someone seems that could be a priority let's say they they have you know, they, they have a serious conviction for many years ago. But since then, 
they have been completely rehabilitated, turned their lives around. They have other important factors to show. Well, um, even in those cases, DHS is still considering um, prosecutorial discretion. So, you know, you, you don't lose anything by trying. And then last one, I think. Okay, now has prosecutorial discretion been done before? Is it better to do it under this administration? Now, prosecutorial discretion is a tool that is inherent, that's part of all law enforcement agencies, all right? So, so since the very beginning of the country, when we're enforcing immigration laws, we decide when, where, how we're gonna enforce these. So it's, we ha we've had different policies in the past. Now, during the previous administration, we didn't really have prosecutorial discretion because everyone was fair play. They had no discretion. Everyone ended up in immigration court and they sought to deport them. Well, you know, that created a big mess now that we're trying to fix. So I would encourage you, if you are right now in immigration court, to seek it immediately or as fast as possible, because you don't know if there's going to be another administration that doesn't see um, this as a main or as a good policy. So yeah, I would definitely encourage you to apply for PD under this administration while we have good guidelines. All right. All right. Well, it looks like that was the last question. This ran a little bit longer than expected, but you know, really passionate about the subject. If you or a loved one are in immigration court or you're worried that you might end up in immigration court, call us. You can call us at 469-708-5800. Again, 469-708-5800. Or you can send us an email at info at jmolina.law. Again, info at jmolina.law. We take cases nationwide. And again, my name is Jorge Molina. Thank you for watching.